Well, for all of you who have been waiting around for something special that I was going to do with the door pulls, this is finally that video. These were a lot of work uh, and I don't really have the proper tools to do this and I took, my, took a big challenge when I did this because I had to do a lot of learning at the same time. In here are petrified wood door pulls. I'm going to show you what I went through to make them and in the final uh, clip at the end of this I'm going to do the unveiling and you're going to be able to see what's inside here. So stick around and uh, let's jump into it. Okay, let me start off and show you where I'm at. So first of all, way back when I was uh, an early teenager, I collected all of this petrified wood. So I've had this kicking around for more than 10 years. In fact, I even have another pail, even bigger pail full of it than this. And I thought recently it would be really cool to make petrified door pulls. And this project that I'm working on right now would be perfect for that. So um, this is the design that I had in mind. This is a large size and I've pared it down to this size. I thought this size would be a perfect size for that whiskey cabinet. So what I need now is to cut some petrified wood down and you can see that it's angled on the side and flat on the top and bottom. So that's my goal to do that and I have another piece similar to this I'm going to start cutting off and uh, we'll see what we can do on a tile saw. Okay, I'm going to cut off the bottom now. If you notice some sparks coming off of this blade in that last cut, there really should not be any sparks coming off. If there's sparks coming off, it means there's not water getting in there. So I'm not sure what the problem is. It just means that I'm wearing out this blade a little bit prematurely. So anyway, I'm going to carry on with the next one. We're almost done here. So. So there's that strip of wood that I've cut and I put a little bit of water on it so you can see the grain that's eventually going to make a couple of these. And you can see that I've how wide it is. So I've been struggling. I actually have two tile saws that I'm working with, uh, an old one and a new one. Um, both of them <laughs> quite used, uh, but they're still seeming to do a pretty decent job. So the next step now that I need to do is to go out to my tile saw. So that's where we're going to go next. And what I want to do now is to cut that profile in this piece of uh, petrified wood that I have. So I've flattened one side of it as much as I can and you can see on the end where I've got an angle uh, where is it which side there the angle cut there and I've got that marked on the saw I've uh, I, I didn't use this as the guide I used the uh, an angle finder and uh, but I have the saw already set up and we should be able to just go out there and cut through this. I'm not going to show you this entire process. It's noisy and it's going to take a while because we're cutting rock um, but you'll get a little bit of an idea what it looks like. Well and there's my finished work. I might try and make another one but I'm really happy with this one. Uh, what I discovered when I was cutting rather than cut it off flat at the top, I could actually crown it by cutting a slope on each side. So it's got a little bit of character to the top now. And when I was cutting it, I realized that I'm actually showing some of the grain of the petrified wood, which is really awesome. So the sides look like that and the bottom is nice and flat. The only thing I need to do now is start doing some polishing. Okay, a few days have passed uh, and I've got all the equipment that I need now. I need to wait for these little diamond polishing wheels and they go on my grinder here. I have this old corded grinder and it comes with this little adapter thing that goes on here and then these just stick on to the um, 
hook and loop that's on there. And there's all sorts of different grits that I need to start, just like sandpaper. Now you can't use an angle grinder because the speed is too high. These need to go at a lower speed. So I do have a, um, it's actually a router control that works well with this. And I, so I can slow that down to about half speed, which is just about perfect. Now, the big thing that I need to do right now is I need, because this is at, a, at an angle, maybe a little there, you can kind of see that angle. I want to be able to polish that so that it's flat, so that when I've got the angle grinder on here that it's flat. I don't want to be trying to go like this because I'm probably not going to be very accurate with it. What I'm going to do is just make an angle cut so this will actually sit flat when it's on there and then I'll just build around it sort of a cage so that it will be stuck in there uh, and it won't move around and I'll also have to do the same thing with the top. I'll make a little cage for the top to sit in so that when I'm grinding it's not going to fly off. Okay now before I move outside I wanted to show you these two jigs so there's the one where this um, rock bar is going to be on its side and it's pretty flat and then I can just take it and flip it over like that actually it's end for end like that and that will be um, flat like that and there's the top one so it'll sit on there and then I can um, ease the top of that now what I didn't tell you before is that these um, diamond grinding wheels whatever they're called um, they are they need to you can do it dry, but they recommend that you do it wet. So I don't have water to run on here. So I'm just going to be spraying it intermittently as I'm working along here just to keep it lubricated. And what that does is it helps to keep the rock out of the grinding surface so that it lasts longer and does a little bit better. Okay, now I'm going to try 200. a better way of doing this but okay well that's all polished up now that was that was more work than I thought um, but it turned out it turned out just the way I was hoping. I didn't want it. It's, it's actually glossier than I wanted it, but uh, that's fine. It's, uh, it is what it is. Now, the next thing, of course, I, I'm making them sort of to fit this um, block of wood. So I've used this block of wood, but I have a, sort of some imperfections. I haven't cut it to length yet, so I've got some imperfections on each side, uh, but I still should have lots of room to, well, enough room anyway to make two of those so I'm just going to go now and cut those and I just do that off camera you've already seen me cutting uh, rock there so I'll just do that off camera well I cut the two pieces in half as you can see and I have good news and I have bad news it actually cut fairly well you can see there's a little jog there I can fix that up but here's what happened wouldn't you know it Petrified wood has the same characteristics as real wood and I was afraid that this might split because the piece of wood or the piece of rock that I was using it had flaked off and it's I'm, I'm pretty disappointed after all this work that in the final cut it did this for me. So I'm going to do something else later on but for right now I'm going to epoxy this together and show you what this sort of what I had planned and what 
this will be. And maybe in the end, the epoxy will be all right. Um, but it's just not what I was hoping for. So anyway, that's the way things go sometimes. Okay, so let me show you what the plan is. Uh, now, first of all, before I go any further, if you look there, you'll see where I had a little bit of dampness. That is the crack on the other side of this. So this one is is or was also going to crack. And I can actually see, when I look closely now, I can see that crack of wood. And this whole piece of uh, petrified wood that I was working with, this was a part of it that had flaked off. So it's not, it's just like real wood. It's just not perfect. Anyway, so I'm gonna carry on as though it is perfect and we'll just, because I really wanna show you what my plan was here. So what I have here are a couple of uh, door pole. These are, you can buy these, um, you can cut these off at different lengths. And the point that I'm getting at here is I'm putting that inside. Now you can see that I've already drilled a recess for that. I've countersunk that. And when I push that in there, that will go all the way in. And what I want to do now, I could just glue these to the door frame, but I really don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to epoxy this little piece of wood to the bottom of my pole and then I'll drill a hole in the door and that will go in and out like that. And the purpose of that is if you ever wanted to change the door pulls, you could do that quite easily without having to pry off something that was stuck on there. So that's my, that's what I'm going to do here. This is my jig, lots of jigs in this little build. Uh, this is my jig for after I glue it, I wanna put it in this little jig. And the reason for that is I don't want these um, bolts down here to be, I, I need them to be sort of vertical, 90 degrees coming out. So I wanted to make sure that they were that way when this glue is drying. So basically all I need to do now is to mix these up and put some glue on the inside of that bolt and on each one of those and on the top of this and mount the petrified wood blocks to the top of that and let that sit for 24 hours because I want to make sure that not only is it dry but it's hard um, and then we can mount those into the cabinets. Okay, and I've already pulled these out. It was very easy because I'd pre-waxed this jig down here so that the epoxy wouldn't stick to them if I had some overflow. So these are all ready to go. What you're seeing in front here are a couple of what we call acorn nuts. Um, and they're a, sort of a cap to nut. And I'm going to be using these uh, to hold these on the door. So let's get the uh, whiskey cabinet in here and mount this hardware. So mounting hardware on doors, something I haven't talked about for quite some time. Now, you've noticed I've got some green tape on here and I've already marked, these doors are 28 inches tall and I've marked the halfway mark there. Now, when you're mounting hardware on doors, especially door pulls, if it's an upper cabinet, of course, we put it down low. If it's a lower cabinet, we put pulls up high. And when it's a mid, sort of a, a mid-height cabinet like this, we put them, we often put them in the middle. Now, there's an optical illusion that happens with hardware that when you place it right in the middle of a door, and I don't know if it's going to show on the video if you're going to really be able to appreciate it but when you look at hardware for people that have mounted hardware right in the middle uh, in the middle this way is fine but in the middle this way is fine but in the middle this way what happens there's a, an optical illusion that it appears that the poles are actually too low so what we do um, and I've just I've, I've tried a few different places here and I'm, I've sort of moved them up and down a little bit. It's not very much that you need to move it. In my case here, I'm going to go up about a half or three quarters of an inch. And it, when it gets finished, it will appear like they're in the middle, but they're actually 
um, a, a tiny bit above the middle uh, because when we put them in the middle, of course, they look like they're too low. So I'm going to go ahead and measure this off a couple of marks here uh, and then I'll drill a hole and we'll mount these door pulls. Okay, let's put that first one in there. There we go. Now I was a little afraid that it might, that, that, that because it's so long that it might twist. So I may later on just put a tiny bit of uh, some anti-skid material in there, but that looks great. I like that. So before I have the final unveiling here, I want to talk a little bit about building things like this. It could be desks, tables, chairs, any kind of a, a wood furniture item that you might be making and what makes them special is what you can talk about that or whoever owns it if it's something you're making for somebody something that they can talk about so for example this is a floating cabinet so somebody who has this that might be one of the features of it this is a floating cabinet and people can see yeah it kind of looks like it's floating off the base the other thing that this one has now is something completely unique. I don't know anybody anywhere who's making petrified wood door pulls. Now, these were a lot of work. I'm not going to be replicating this in this manner. I started off with probably the hardest project I could do here, but now I have something I can talk about. So these are petrified door pulls on this cabinet. So something that you can talk about, things that stand out, that's always what sells whenever you're making something for other people or making things to sell, those special little things. So let's have a look at what I have inside. And this is kind of a, a prototype, but now you'll be able to see what this looks like. So you can have your glasses in one area, uh, in this case, I have a wine section down here, and this is actually movable so that you could take that out of there. Um, and then you could put hard liquor on that side. Lots of different things that you could do with it. It doesn't have to be a liquor cabinet. This could be a bookshelf, it could be a collectibles, uh, all sorts of things that you could do with this. And you can dress this up because these are, are removal. You could dress this up any way that you want. So that's the final look of the whiskey cabinet complete with petrified wood door pulls. I'm Colin Connett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.